I'm going to continue on the serving deal. Salvation is the most important thing God is interested in. Everything else is extra. You get extra from God. Verse I left off Sunday, I want to go back because I want to pick it right back up and rehearse just a little bit more uh, because I don't know if you could ever exhaust God's word on any subject because there's so much. Can you help me? Come on. Last scripture you read was Philippians 4, verse 7. Well, let's go back there then. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. Verse 7, let's look and see then. And because what God wants us to do is to be able to walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit, come to a place where we're not flip-flopping, in our emotions and our feelings, because we're not led by that. We should understand that God wants us to be led by his spirit just on Sunday. <laughs> just when you're feeling good. Just when things go on your way. There's a discipline that God wants us to have in our lives that we can be able to show Christ. We can be able to show. Now, the excuses that you could make in your mind will not hold water before God. Why? Because of the promise he made, and it has been fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Now, if you don't get it, you're going to rebel now against the very statement that we made because you're going to think you supposed to be like you are uh, when you first come to Christ. But there's a growing process that must continue because you have to show that the blood and the power of his resurrection is good. You got to show that. Uh, you know, the scripture says that, that you might show the will of God. Uh, I mean, Romans chapter 12 says that the acceptable will of God. Romans chapter 12, I'm going I'm to I'm move. I, I know I go to scripture, but you know what I got to do. I got to, I heard that. In other words, you're supposed to show the acceptable will of God for your life, for every believer's life in yielding. Not the same task, but yielding to the spirit. Everyone in here must do that to be able to do God's will, and to finish the course. Everybody, you're not an exception to the rules. Everybody have to be able to yield, to submit to God, where you can be able to serve him. Not yourself, but him. Read that verse for me, please. Romans 12, verse 2. Uh -huh. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, easy Bible right there. In other words, you got to transform, be conformed. You cannot remain the same and show God's will. Come on. Do not become like the people who belong to this world, but let God completely change the way that you think, so that you live. First thing, that's what we've been dealing for many, many months. How you think. If you, if you can never change the way you think, you will never receive the power of God to be able to do anything. Because you have to think according to how God thinks. There's, there's no other way. You can't bring your uh, stinking thinking in. To do what God wants. If not, you're going to get deceived by yourself, by your feelings. Come on, go ahead. So that you live differently, then you will understand what God wants you to do. You will know what is good. You will know what pleases God. You will know what is completely right. Wow. Man, that's a blessing. You need to back up. You're going to start with what you're going to know. What? I'm sorry, that you will... Then then, understand. Then you will understand. Okay, first of all, you're going to be able to understand. That's very difficult. Most of us to understand what God wants. We, we all, two, two and four in our mind, we think this, we think that. Settle it down. 
is because of his spirit. How I get that spirit to be able to lead and guide me. I get that spirit to lead and guide me where I can draw from God because I come to God always grateful for salvation. Always grateful that he saved me. Now, now what, so what I got, I got to rearrange my thinking of who I am. I am a sinner that need him. Every day. Every minute. Every moment. So you got to rearrange your thinking. But if you think you all had the bag of chips because you got a victory yesterday, you think you all right now because things going your way, you still, you still going to need him. It ain't about that. It's about salvation. Now, I'm, I'm trying to say that the problem is salvation is the most important thing in God's program. That you have been born again and you continue to add to your faith. You begin more patient, more long-suffering, more loving and kind. You're growing. Now, you, you can't be the same person you was 10 years, 5 years ago now, and you still the same. You still got the same ugly ways, and you even come out your mouth, that's the way I am. Huh? You don't want to talk, see? Yeah, you need to check yourself, because something wrong, you're supposed to be constantly becoming more like Christ. Now, most people, they get, when they get spiritual, they get redrawn. They were drawn from people now. What is that? You, that ain't Jesus. That ain't God. That ain't the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's you. Because the scripture don't teach withdrawn now. Boy, nobody saying that. What? what? That ain't God. That's you. You ain't becoming more like no Christ. Well, I be. That Philippians must was an extra scripture I, I left off. I, I wasn't the last one in my lesson. I must have gave something else. I want to go back. I want to go back to the last thought that I had. Uh, there's so much here. I'm trying. We must identify as Christians, not just in words only, but in the way you carry yourself what you do, your concern for others to go to heaven. Uh huh. That's the most important thing. Because ain't nobody here gonna live forever. And ain't nobody in this room can believe that they're gonna live till they get ready to die. And you're gonna live till you get ready to die, but it's gonna be on him, not on you. So you have to recognize that. Salvation is the most important thing. Did I read Romans chapter 6? Yes, sir. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. No, we didn't do verse 1. We did 12 through 23. 12 through 23. Okay, well, i back up then. Romans 13, verse 15. Let's go back there a minute. Uh, we'll actually start at verse 12. Let's, let's pick it up right there. I see there. Okay, let's go and look at that. And the easy Bible, all right. Uh, Sin don't supposed to rule your life. In other words, salvation is to keep sin from controlling you. That's what, that's what Jesus died for. Sin don't supposed to control you. Wait, see, well, Pastor, I don't go out no more. I don't smoke no more. We're talking inner sins now. You ought to be able to overcome that by now. We're talking the inner stuff that's going to stay with you until you die that you're going to have to battle with all the days of your life. Jealousy, selfishness, envy. You got that? That's where I'm coming from. I'm not talking about outward, because people can fake outward stuff all the time. That's going to get you in hell. Verse 12, come on. Romans 13, 12. Romans chapter 6, verse 12. Sure. Romans chapter 6, verse 12. Did I say 13? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, everybody say that, then I'm going to believe. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 6, verse 12. I'm sorry. 
So, do not let sin rule your life in this world. Uh -huh. Do not do the wrong things that your body wants to do. Sin can use your body to do things that are wrong, so do not let any part... Now, sin can use you. Now, without the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, sin is going to use you. No prayer, no word, no nothing without the Spirit going to help you. You're supposed to do all them things, but you need the Spirit. The Holy Ghost, that's why he was sent. After Jesus died, God sent the extra ingredient, the Spirit, to be able to control, to lead you. Now, the only problem is you can grieve the Spirit. See, and that's what you got to watch then. I am not grieving the Spirit and stopping the Spirit from moving in such a way in me. Because why I stay angry? And I know I'm wrong. Why I think the wrong way about certain things? Why I'm doing that? Well, you probably got a generation cursed, your people, <laughs> and some of that problem too, fighting you at the same time. But nevertheless, all of us have a struggle in some area or another. So you're going to have to learn how. So I can't make an excuse because mine seem not to be bad as yours. Come on, keep going. So do not let any parts of your body serve sin as their master. Uh -huh. Instead, be ready to serve God as your master. You can do that because you now have a new life. Your old life is dead. Now, he, now, you know, now he put a twist on it. If you ain't never had no new life, you're still the same person. You never admit your sin that I need to change because I'm not like Christ. Now, all of us, everybody can raise their hand on that one. Now, you got to admit that. Now, what God does, after amount of years, he zero on the problem. When you first start, it'd be every, you know, but when you grow, you begin now, you could tell he didn't zero on the problem because you don't like it. If somebody tell you about yourself right there, you get angry even. Because you've been saved, so-called, a long time. But you're still struggling in those areas. And, but now, now, many people get angry because they don't like this kind of preaching. Because it zero in on the natural man. The natural man have to be able to be under control by the Spirit of God. Huh. So on. give every part of your body to God. Uh -huh. Then he will use you to do right things. So now, I got to give myself for him to use me. If I don't give myself, I'm going to use myself. Oh, you got to come on. Go ahead, read. Sin will no longer have authority over you. Uh -huh. You do not have a new life because you obey the law which God gave to Moses. You have a new life because God is very kind to you. Okay, God, show his grace. He's kind to you. That's why. Now, Paul had this argument because the, the Jews, the scholars, believed that they, you had to follow the law. In other words, Gentiles came in. They believed they had to be circumcised. They had to follow the rituals to really be saved. This was his argument. This was his fight all his life to show that it's not about your religious rituals. It's about what Jesus have done. You receive that, recognizing you are a sinner. You've come short of the glory of God. And no matter what you do, what you say, can fix that. It's only fixed through Calvary and the blood and what Jesus Christ has done. Now, you need to stay focused on that. At least you get proud of something you thought you did right. Because the righteousness is in Christ. Verse what? Verse 15. Come on, I'm getting so, there. Someone might say, so we have a new life because God is kind to us. Moses' laws do not rule us anymore. Then maybe we should continue to do wrong things. So that way we can do what we want. That's what most people think. No. 
you wouldn't do that if you had something in you. Come on, go ahead. It will not make any difference. Uh -huh. No, that is not true. Remember this. When you agree to serve someone as a slave, you have to obey that person as your master. You may choose to serve sin as your master. If you do that, you will die. Or you may choose to obey God. If you do that, you will live in a way that is right. At one time, you were slaves to sin, but then you received God's true message, and you were happy to obey it. Well, that's it. That's what's supposed to have been and happen. We're just reading, see. That got to be a process in you. Or you just reading the Bible right now. In other words, you go back uh, one verse. I'm sorry. Just go back up a verse few six. lines. I just want to read a little bit more of it. Just come back up a little bit. Come At on, one time, place. you were slaves to sin. Yes, sir. Good. But That's what you got to recognize. Now, right now, you sitting there, you think you ain't, you ain't, I'm all right. I know myself. You've been lied to already. Because you don't really know what you might do under different predicaments and circumstances. I didn't see people do a whole bunch of stuff. That they, they say to themselves, I wouldn't believe I would have did that. You don't know you. You don't know the sinful person. That's what you. Now, I know you think you're smarter than what God said. Nobody knows their self like that. That's why you have to always keep your body, yourself under subjection. That's the only way, under what God says. See, this is not a little game. But I ain't going to go. Go ahead. Keep reading. Right there. But then you receive God's true message, uh -huh. and you are happy to obey it. I think no, wait, wait. You said here, but if you don't receive what the word says, there will be no change in you. You've got to slow this down. If you don't receive what just was said, Every one of us, there will be no change. Because I got to say what he said about myself. I have to admit, that's me, Lord. I want that what you got. Yes, I want it. Yes. See, you don't like having no fun. See, you're going to have to say, I want that. I got a deficiency here. I got a problem here with sin in me. Now, I might think I'm a nice person and I treat people and I'm all that. You'd still got a sin problem. Come on, go ahead. I thank God because of that. As a result, God has made you free from the power of sin. You are now like slaves who serve everything that is right and good. It is difficult for you to understand these things because you are still weak, so I'm using a human picture of slaves to help you to understand better. At one time, you agreed to serve bad things as your master. You let your body do wrong and dirty things. Uh -huh. Like slaves who serve sin, you continue to do more and more bad things, so now you must use your body to serve what is right and good. Then you will do more and more good things which show that you belong to God. When you were slaves to sin, you did not even have to think about what was right and good. You did things that you are ashamed about now. Nothing good came from them. In the end, the result of those things is death. But now God has made you free from the power of sin. You have become God's slaves. Many good things. No, no, I read that. I remember now. I read that, see. You, if you understand that, you're supposed to have been set free. Now, I hope you understand that didn't happen just because you said you believe in Jesus. Because some of y'all sit in the same place you were when you said that, in the way you think. Now, why I say that? Because if you changed all of a sudden, you should be an evangelist. You should speak in such a way that your faith will be as a mustard seed you should move mountains if you got it. You should be able to pray and effective prayers. You should see it come to pass. Now, because you have tapped in, and most of the time our prayers not being effective because we're praying something we want. We ain't lining up with what he wants. Right, huh? So, here we go. 
This is where I left off at. I think I read this. We will also begin to experience a new kind of freedom that comes through the forgiveness of sin. Uh -huh. Romans 8, 2 says, and because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. Once saved, our sins are forgiven or washed away. Okay, but it starts leading you away from the same way you react, the same way you respond. All right? You start being led by the spirit of God. I read this, so I'm going quick. Come on. As we develop in the faith and allow God's Holy Spirit to work in our hearts, uh -huh. we are increasingly set free from sin's power. Now, you're supposed to be, well, ain't nobody saying nothing. What is this? You don't understand you're supposed to be set free from sin's power? You don't get that? Something's supposed to happen to you when Jesus Christ come in. And the reason that happened, because you don't even believe that. You don't even understand that. If you're supposed to, you got to get it out of the way you think first. I got to go, though. I moved to this point Sunday, I believe. Go ahead. More gifts from God are the result of salvation. More Her gifts of God are the result of salvation. I read 1 Peter 1, verse 8 through verse 9. Huh? Why? Come on. 1 Peter 1, 8 through 9 speaks of joy. Uh -huh. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Now, yeah, that, that's how you get it. You've not seen him, but you believe in him. Now, not just a historical Jesus that came and died on Calvary, but one that is you have a relationship with. His presence, you believe he's there. The power of the Spirit is there. You believe he'll never leave me nor forsake me. Hmm. Now you're gonna, something's going to start happening now. Now, there's going to be a test if you believe that, because when things don't go right, let's see if you still believe he's there. No problem, that's easy, that's how you work. Let's see, will you still have this joy? Huh? Philippians 4, it, 7, that's how I got there, come on. And Philippians 4, 7 speaks mm -hmm. of peace. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Okay, now, so your heart and your mind should be guarded all the time now. Your heart and mind, because you believe that. God, you're going to guard me. I'm not going to let my emotions run away with me. I'm not doing that because that go against your promise. Huh? That's what you promised. You promised that I'm going to be kept. Huh? Now, finally, that's where I need to go. Finally, we need salvation to discover our true potential and purpose in life. That's the only way. If salvation is not the most important thing, and you you into something else, then you're not going to find your true potential in life anyway. You're going to miss it, like many, many have miserably. You're going to miss it. You ain't going to find your true potential. Now, if you don't find your true potential, you don't have no joy. You don't have no peace. It only is temporarily, as long as you think you're doing good. Oh, Jesus, this old discipleship class. Come on, go ahead. Ephesians 2.10 says, uh -huh. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. As we develop in our relationship with God, he transforms us by his Holy Spirit into the person we were created to be. That's how you know. He starts transforming you. Now, I'm trying to slow it down. That's because you have a relationship with him. Now, most of y'all don't have no relationship like he talking about anyway. The relationship is not based on that person is in agreement with you. Boy, look at y'all. I thought you come down there in the dark. Look at it. That ain't no relationship. That's you having what you want, doing what you want, and how you feel, and I need to be in agreement with you. No relationship. You don't know a relationship. See? You have never understood a relationship with nobody. Or it's how you feel, how you think. 
Guess what? You don't understand the love of God because God don't love like that. So you got to get to know God better. So you got to run. He has to run this course to get you to understand some things. I'm not a man. I do not lie. What I say and what I've set in place go always come to pass. Now, it don't matter how long it's going to come to pass. Wow. It's okay. I'm going to get through with this. Come on. Our fullest potential and true spiritual fulfillment are revealed as we walk in the purposes and plans that God designed for us and designed for us for nothing else compares to this ultimate experience of salvation. Okay, now, everything is wrapped up in salvation because that's going to be the final say anyway for all us. That's salvation. Because he entered eternal life. Not temporary life, not temporal things you see here. He's not into that. He wants this foundation to be built on eternal. Now, salvation is going to be the key because that's the thing that got mankind free. So you could always reference back to that being the rule. How I'm going to finish. How I'm going to get this power. How I'm going to be able to be led by the Spirit. It always going to go back to the salvation. And I got to move. Come on, Elder. How to have the assurance of salvation. Uh-huh. If you felt the tug of God on your heart, you can have the assurance of salvation. By becoming a Christian, you will take one of the most important steps in your life on earth and begin an adventure unlike any other. The cause of salvation begins with God. He initiates it by drawing us to come to him. Now, it's going to start with God because what God is the only way that you're going to be able to survive. Now, let's see, let's see. I did Romans. Let's do the side view. We read Romans 6, verse 13, verse 14, right? Yes, sir. We went through that already. Let's do the side view for understanding. Now, if you read that statement again, and then I'll give the explanation here. Come up. If you felt the tug of God on your heart, mm -hmm. you can have the assurance of salvation. By becoming a Christian, you will take one of the most important steps in your life on earth and begin an adventure unlike any other. Now, you're supposed to, this is supposed to be an adventure. You bored. You worried. You fearful. This is supposed to be an adventure. That's what this is supposed to be. You, you don't even get it. And at Romans chapter 6, verse 20, verse 20, let's see. Because there's some ground rules that's set already, that God has already set. Uh, let's see, I missed something. Uh, whatever man sow, he shall reap. All right? I missed something. I think it was in the verses where I was before. Or uh, was that Romans chapter 6? That was Galatians, that text, whatever you that, saw you That read. was Galatians, where I was in Galatians. Galatians verse chapter, what? I'm sorry. That's Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Verse 7. Be not deceived, God uh -huh. is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Or uh, so he also reap. Go back in the easy Bible. I missed something. Because there's some ground rules. If you sow to the flesh, it says, as you go on, right? Nobody can hide the things that he does from God. Uh huh. Do you think a false thought like that, it is like a farmer who sows seeds in his field, the same kind of plants will grow as seeds which he sows, this will be his harvest. A person may, be, may do things only to make himself happy. That person's harvest will be God's punishment and death. Oh! You, you better listen. You, you hear what he just slipped in on you? You don't realize that. He said that thing can mess you up. Easy Bible says, right? Yes, sir. We're in the Easy Bible. All right. Uh, common English Bible says, since you don't understand that, you don't just sow what you want and walk away. This is in the spirit realm. This is not in the natural the way you think that. See, most Christians get in trouble because you don't know the ground rules. When you become a Christian, 
You are trotting under the soles of your feet the blood of Jesus because you dare not to trust that power. You start to whining, you start to complaining, you start to mind people's business, you start getting in other stuff that you don't even know but half of the story anyway. So you get in trouble. Okay, you got it? Come on. Make no mistake, God is not mocked. A person will harvest what they plant. Those who plant only for their own benefit will harvest devastation from their selfishness. Not from your selfishness if you just plant for your benefit. What? I thought that's what I spoke. No, 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 no. Not as no Christian. You do that in the world just for your benefit. That's why God tried to get you to pay tithes, to give, offering, to help other people, to love people like you love yourself, to treat. That's why you do that. Because of that verse right there. Because you become selfish if you don't. Romans chapter 6, right? No, Galatians. We're in Galatians uh, chapter 6, six verse. Yes. Verse 8. Verse but 8. Come those on. who plant for the benefit of the Spirit will harvest eternal life from the Spirit. You're going to harvest eternal life from the Spirit. You don't get it, see? So if you're so selfishly, it turned into a curse anyway. Because as a Christian, you're supposed to be sowing to help other people. Now, most Christians don't know that. Boy, that's a good fight here tonight. So you're not, you shouldn't plant to benefit yourself. Uh, CEV, right, got it. Huh? Verse 8 through verse 10, right? CEV, uh -huh. you cannot fool God. So don't make a fool of yourself. You will harvest what you plant. If you follow your selfish desires, you will harvest destruction. But if you follow the Spirit, you will harvest eternal life. Okay, so now, if you weren't listening, it's very important to learn how to follow the Spirit then. Not follow your own reason and your own mind, because you can set yourself up according to the book. Huh? Being a Christian and being a selfish Christian. That's a blizzard in the summertime. That's in the Bible. Now I can listen, I can hear conversations, people talk like that all the time. Because they don't know what's in the book already. Huh? Glory to God. Come here, I'll finish right there. Don't get tired of helping others. Uh, you don't get tired even of helping others. Huh? Come you on. You will be rewarded when the time is right if you don't give up. We should help people whenever we can. No, right, yeah, look, because you said, because I'm tired. You don't know how to draw from the Spirit for no strength. He's saying you shouldn't be tired. Because what I've done on Calvary and the power of the Holy Spirit, take care of that. Yeah. Woo so actually, you're without excuse. Because he said, I got that. He even said, you shouldn't even be getting tired. You should be drawn from the Spirit of God, which never get tired. Anybody want to say nothing to me? I should have, Pastor, you must be uh, feeling good up there in the light or something. Come on, because you're really rough tonight. Come on, go ahead. We should help people whenever we can, uh -huh. especially if they are followers of the Lord. Uh, King James said, of their household of faith. If they follow the Lord, you're supposed to help them. Boy, judgment day is going to be a blizzard. Because all you're going to do is go right back to what he said. Look at that. Huh? Wow. Man. Verse 10, right? Yes, sir. That was verse 10. That's good. I probably don't need to go no further with that. But I'm going to go to another passage that certify that. Huh? Let's see then. 2 Peter 2, verse 18. Easy Bible. Yeah? Easy Bible. Now, what Paul was doing, and Peter also, he wrote to churches. 
Paul specialized in writing to churches after they got saved for they could be able to move and do God's will, not just come to church. But they had to get their mind right first to do that because if your mind wrong, then you're not going to be able to serve God. So your mind got, you got to think different. So if you don't think according to the mind of Christ, you can't do it. You can do all the rest of the rituals and do everything else. You got to get the right thinking. Got to correct the way you think. You think God is weak. You think God like you. God don't mood swing. God is stable. Know where he going, where he going. Come on. The message is that these teachers speak seem very important, but their words really mean nothing. In that way, they lead people away from God. Some people have not been believers for very long. Now, this is how they lead people away from God. People who do a lot of uh, yap yapping, like they know what they're talking about. Come on. They have only just become free from the wrong things that people do, but the false teachers tell these people to do bad things that make them happy. The, uh, uh, the false teachers tell her. You have to have fun. You have to live your life. You have to take care of yourself. What you going to do for yourself? False teachers. Now it's in your Bible. I ain't made none of this up. Come on. Go ahead. The false teachers tell them to do whatever they want to do. They tell them to do anything they want to do. They promise that this will make these people really free, but the false teachers themselves are not free. Instead, they are like slaves. They cannot stop doing the bad things that will destroy them. We know that if something has power over a person, then that person is its slave. Okay, if they got power over you, you can't stop from doing it, you are still in bondage. If you cannot stop being depressed, worried, fearful, unforgiving, you're in bondage. That thing come upon you, you'll be having a good day, and all of a sudden, ah! <laughs> I'm just trying to, this hard, Jack. Yeah, I know this real. I've been that many times. You thinking wrong. That's not what he said. That's not who I am. Scriptures say, he's not giving me a spirit of fear. Of bondage. That's what your Bible say. Say so you didn't tell yourself that. I ain't just saying where this come from. I ain't, I, that ain't me. That used to be me. I got a new spirit now. I started this with Joshua and Caleb and the other ten spies that couldn't, they didn't have the same spirit. When they went in to the promised land, Everything was set, but they had giants. That's what most Christians do. They get saved, and then they go in, but there's giants in living for Christ. And they can't trust that God is going to slay the giants. All I got to do is do what he said. Now, sometimes you're going to have to do some hard stuff. But you're going to have to strengthen up, good up, and you're going to have to do that. Because he, he said, I'm going to give you the strength to do it. And sometimes you've got to do it. It's not just that you, sometimes God might tell you to say something. You're going to have to be bold enough, understand enough to express that. Amen. It's okay, go ahead. Come Verse on. 20, yes, these sir. false teachers learned about our Lord Jesus Christ who saves us. As a result, now wait a while, these false teachers did learn about the Lord Jesus Christ one time. You better pay attention. Come on. As a result, they had stopped doing the bad things that belong to this world. Ah, they, they, got, they stopped doing the bad things. I'm just reading what y'all, these people were genuine one time. Uh-oh, come on. They had become free from the power of those things, but now they have started to do those bad things again. Those things have power over them, and they cannot stop doing them. So now, these false teachers are worse than they were at the beginning, before they believed in the Lord Jesus. 
it would have been better for them if they had never known God's good way. Y'all yeah, know in the King James said it had been better that they know I like the dog returned to the vomit. Got some verses. Come on. But they did not understand about the right things that God wants us to do. But the reason I went to the other version is maybe you understand because you'll quote that. What was the problem? They didn't understand the right things to do. Oh. That's why you got to hide the word in your heart and you got to get teaching where you could be, because we miss stuff a lot of times. And what God do, he'll zero in on it. They not doing the right things because they say they are Christian. You're supposed to trust and believe what God can do, huh? who he is, and God has power. God is magnificent. You can't beat God. You got to believe that. God is not going to allow nothing to come upon me that I cannot bear unless he's going to make a way of escape. Now, Pastor, how you can be so sure of that? That's what your Bible say. That's why I could be so sure of that. Now, if, that, if he lying, well, I'm believing a lie then. That's what I'm supposed to do. Believe what he said. Change my mind the way I think. Come on, Elder. And then they turned away from that way of life. Uh -huh. They stopped obeying God's good rules that people had taught them. You know, these true proverbs, after a dog has been sick, it returns to eat it again. Also, after you wash a pig, it will quickly roll in the dirt again. Okay, y'all got that. We can go on. If you don't do, you go back into the same mode where you were before. All right? Got that? Come on, look on my screen. I got to go. Come on. You can learn more about what it means to be born again and how to get to heaven, but God makes salvation simple. His plan of salvation is not based on a complicated formula. It's not dependent upon being a good person because no one can ever be good enough. Our salvation is based firmly on the atoning death of Jesus Christ. Okay, that's what it's based on. On what Jesus Christ has done for me. Now you say, well... I, I believe that. No, 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 no. Let's go a little further than that because you could say that. You have to show that. And you'll respond, how you react, how you trust the things that come towards you each and every day. Do you really believe what Jesus Christ did for you is genuine and is for you? Because you got to believe that's for you. You can believe all them promises and everything God said is to protect me. Huh? This is going to protect me. I'm going to be protected by God because Jesus Christ did such and such for me. And I don't have to fret nor worry about nobody or anything going to overtake this because God got me covered. Now, I don't want to go too much further because I like my time over. I don't know if the heater just come on or something came on. I'm hot. I don't know if it's a heater or unit. I heard it. Y'all, I know y'all all right. It's the lights and everything else here got me. All right. Glory to God. Now, let me finish this thought. God has this plan of salvation is to be able not just to save you to go to heaven, but to save you and equip you with power. Where you're going to be able to beat your flesh. Because your flesh is going to war against the Spirit of God, until you did. Your carnal mind, your desires, going to war against this till you did. And it ain't never going to cease. So you need to gird up. You need to put on your full armor. Now, I, I'm amazed when God said put on the full armor of God, 
that you might be able just to dress and look pretty. He says, the evil day going to come, and you're going to have to be able to stand. Now, you say, well, Pastor, I don't expect no evil day. You don't have to expect it. It's coming. Because being a Christian, if you don't get challenged, you're not going to grow. So you're going to be challenged. I always, I've been telling people this for, uh, some of y'all been around 20-some years with me. I always say, after every, on the heels of every blessing, there's a trial. So when you get blessed, you better look for some trials coming. Don't, don't, don't sit there trying, don't act surprised, because you're going to be tested to see if you're still going to have that same attitude, that same <coughs> worship, that same praise unto God, no matter what happened. <coughs> Some people never get it, so they stay in bondage. That's how you stay in bondage, because you can't understand how God operates to help you to grow spiritually. See, you won't understand that. Because you somewhere you used to have in your way, you want to do what you want, so you don't understand that. God has this unique way of causing us to be able to continue growing. And now if you now, now if you if you're gonna follow what he say, if you're gonna cooperate with him, but if you got a another plan and you think is a different way to be able to grow, then you're going to stay stuck like Chuck because you're not going to move. He got a master plan already. Why, why does he do that? Because he know what's in us. He know how we really are. So you have to do that where you can be prepared to go to glory. Now that's a loving father that see what you can't see. See, that's the way God does. But the problem is, you don't believe, you think you can see good as him. You don't know yourself that well. So he got to work that out of you that you can be able to trust him. That's all he's doing. I'm simplifying it. That's all he's doing to you. If you can trust he good and he loving and he kind, no matter what, then you move. Bless his name. Ah, I'm going to close there. I ain't going to go no further. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Glory to God. Because um, I'm hot. I don't know why, but <laughs> Holy Ghost. Why don't you stand? Come on. That's enough. I, I got a little bit more to go with the serving part. But I'm not going to push it tonight. I don't want it. It's about 8.32 right now. I don't want to go too long. Won't you stand? God has a master plan that he always have set up for us. Okay? You always have a master plan. And if you can follow him through it all, he's going to bless you. Okay? Because he's very creative and getting us to serve him. Now, you're supposed to serve God in the power of the almighty God. You're supposed to serve God with power, with confidence. That's how you're supposed to be. And that's the next move. I want to show you, you plan him cheap. You plan him like you are. And that's going to cause you to be vulnerable to Satan attack. Because you're playing him cheap. God is not like us. God wants you to be able to display that I am a child of God and I really understand how God operates. So I trust him. I trust him now. Because I begin to see, wait a while, God ain't, ain't going to start changing. It, it, God love me. God going to even be long-suffering with me and give me a chance to even get it right as long as I keep pressing toward him. He's not going to just abandon me and leave me alone. He's going to stay there to try to help me. Because he know, like David said, I'm only flesh. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm not going to intentionally try to do wrong. That's the key. 
So he's going to help me now. He's going to help me to see, help me to understand the way he wanted it done. Now, I'm saying that for some of y'all where you can have confidence in who God is and that he's going to, you, you, you got issues. Everybody got issues. Everybody got problems. But he's going to help you with whatever issues because he loves you and he wants you to be the best you can be for him. Now, he's looking at spiritual things first now that you would understand that that is more important than anything. That's the idea. 